Hey YouTube, Doug with Dini in the Garage here. Today, I'm going to talk about your cooling system. This is your cooling system, in a nutshell. Wildly simplified. Let's cover the main components and the main function of each component. First, you have your engine over here. All right? Your engine is creating heat through combustion. That heat needs to go somewhere, otherwise you will cause damage to your engine. Blown head gaskets, warped or seized components inside, uh, blown seals, any number of things can occur if an engine is allowed to heat out of control. Conversely, an engine also does not uh, operate ideally when it's too cold. So, uh, there are other components in this system to help keep an engine in an optimal range. For a lot of engines, that's right around 210 degrees. First component that we must talk about after the engine is the thermostat. The thermostat is the gatekeeper. It's the valve for this entire system. What it is, is a small spring operated valve. And it sits in between your engine and the send line for your radiator. All right, most radiators run from top to bottom, meaning the water flows in the top of the radiator, it flows, cools, runs out the bottom. There are some reverse flows. I know Chevys do that. I'm sure there are others. Most that you're going to find run from top to bottom. <clears throat> now this thermostat, like I said, it's spring operated. So when the coolant in the engine over here that is not flowing yet reaches a certain temperature, a spring inside this thermostat collapses, thus opening the valve and allowing the flow. All right. Now what drives the flow is this water pump. You have a water pump on the front of your engine. There's like a little turbine inside and that turbine is run off a pulley that is controlled by the engine. So if your engine is running, your water pump is running. Even though it's running though, it's not always pumping because of this uh, valve, your thermostat up here. But when your engine coolant reaches a certain temperature, operating temperature they call it, this pops open, allowing flow to be drawn by this. Now where does the flow go? It goes into the radiator. The whole purpose of the radiator is to offer as a heat exchanger. All right? Liquid is an excellent conductor of heat. All right? So it easily pulls all the heat out of the engine. But now it itself is hot and you need to relieve the coolant of the heat that it has gathered in the engine so that it can be recycled back into the engine to use again. The way we do that is by taking the hot coolant into the radiator and exchanging that heat into the ambient air around the radiator. The problem is this. Gas, air, is not as good a conductor of heat as liquid is. So you need a lot of air to cool the same amount that you would with liquid. That means either you need to be driving very fast, constantly, for this radiator to work efficiently, or when you're stopped at a stoplight or idling or going slow, you need some other source of air. That's why in front of your radiator, you always have at least one fan. They can be driven electrically, they can be clutch driven off the motor, but you have a fan that will kick on so that when it is needed, it will draw extra air across the radiator to help facilitate the exchange of heat from the coolant into the ambient air. Another component of your system, a highly vital one, is your coolant reservoir. All right, this will be off to the side, connected by a small vacuum hose looking thing. What this does is this system fluctuates in volume uh, greatly. All right? When this coolant is at operating temperature, 200, 210 degrees, it expands and uh, it needs somewhere for that expanding coolant to go. It goes into this reservoir. Conversely, once this contracts, you don't want all that volume to be filled with air or to draw a vacuum on the system, so it pulls some coolant back in as it cools, thus allowing your engine to constantly be at 100% coolant level uh, without building too much pressure or vacuum. So to recap, you build up heat in your engine. Once you reach operating temperature, your thermostat opens. Because of the draw, the current that your water pump is creating, coolant is allowed to flow through the thermostat, out the engine, through the radiator hose, into the radiator, through the radiator where it exchanges it, its heat with the ambient air around it, then sends cool coolant from the bottom of the radiator through the water pump back into the engine where it starts the process again. All right, guys, I understand that this is a very rudimentary, basic explanation of uh, how the cooling system in your vehicle works, but it's the first thing you need to understand if you hope to diagnose a cooling problem, an overheat situation in your vehicle. If you are interested in learning how to diagnose cooling issues, hit the card up in the corner, all right? Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it educational, if not a little bit entertaining. If you did, by all means, hit that like button down below, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment. Thanks for watching.
see you next time.